Robert M. S. Sapolsky, Behave, The Biology of Humans at Our Best and Worst. Get ready to delve into the fascinating world of human behavior as we explore the summary of Behave, The Biology of Humans at Our Best and Worst by Robert M. and Sapolsky. In this riveting journey, we'll gain an understanding of the various factors that influence humanity's actions, from neurological processes to evolutionary roots, and from cultural background to geographical origins. We will examine how different parts of our brain shape our conduct, the impact of sensory cues on our perception of others, and the intricate relationship between hormones and behavior. As we move along, we'll uncover the effects of brain development, cultural conditioning, and even political inclination on the choices we make and the behaviors we exhibit. Unraveling Human Behavior the roots of human behavior can be traced back to both our biological and cultural origins. Our actions stem from a blend of instinctual responses, environmental factors, and societal influences throughout our lives. To fully understand these complex origins, an interdisciplinary approach is necessary, diving deep into the realms of biology, culture, and history. Everything happens for a reason, and this is especially true when trying to comprehend human behavior. The journey to unravel humanity's best and worst behaviors requires an in-depth exploration of human biology. Moments before a behavior occurs, like pulling a trigger, our brain's oldest regions, inherited from our ancestral predecessors, come into play. These regions process basic instincts, such as the fear of death. Additionally, our brain processes sensory data, visual or auditory information, gathered from the immediate surroundings. This sensory input impacts how we act, like heightened awareness of danger in a war zone making us more prone to aggression. However, our brain's response isn't purely spontaneous. Our behavioral biology is intricately connected with society, culture, and history. The way we behave is also determined by the society we grew up in, as these societies shape our actions over several years to decades. Different environments condition us to behave in various ways. For instance, a person exposed to constant violence is more likely to exhibit violent behavior. Furthermore, our ancestors have also left their mark on human behavior. Delving back hundreds or thousands of years, it's evident that ancestral geographies and ecologies have impacted human actions, both positively and negatively. To conclusively understand the complex origins of human behavior, a multidisciplinary approach is indispensable. This collaborative methodology melds biology, culture, and history to identify the factors that shape who we are and how we act. Unraveling the Aggression Puzzle The complex process behind aggressive behavior relies on two vital parts of the brain, the amygdala and the frontal cortex. The amygdala is linked with fear and anger, as illustrated by the case of Charles Whitman, whose brain tumor-induced aggression pointed to this region's involvement. Simultaneously, the frontal cortex plays a key role in regulating emotions and impulsiveness, as shown by the story of Phineas Gage, who suffered a frontal cortex injury and experienced significant behavioral changes. Further studies have revealed an association between frontal cortex disruptions in violent criminals and psychopaths, highlighting the crucial role these brain regions play in controlling aggression. Overall, unraveling the intricacies of aggression requires the understanding of the functions of both the amygdala and the frontal cortex. Stories like Charles Whitman's chilling murderous spree, where a tumor affected his amygdala's functionality, emphasize the power of this region in instigating aggression. The case of Phineas Gage, with his remarkable personality transformation after a frontal cortex injury, showcases how vital this area is in keeping aggression in check. Accumulating evidence connects frontal cortex malfunctions and traumatic injuries to violent criminal behavior, ultimately unraveling key facets of the complex aggression puzzle. Sensory Cues and Social Perception Our five senses are constantly transmitting sensory cues to our brain, and these cues play a significant role in shaping our perceptions and attitudes toward others. Visual cues, such as skin color, impact the brain's response, creating subconscious biases that affect the real world. 
Auditory cues also influence fear unconsciously, and our behavior varies based on immediate social contexts. Our five senses continuously relay sensory cues to the brain, influencing how we perceive and interact with others. One such cue is the visual aspect of a person's face, which has a profound effect on our attitudes toward strangers. Our brains are highly sensitive to facial features like skin color, and studies have shown that when a face from a different ethnic background is displayed briefly, the amygdala activates in white participants. Although this initial reaction can be rationalized with longer exposure, there are still real-life consequences of this inherent bias. For example, criminals with more African features may receive longer sentences for identical crimes than their counterparts. Consequently, defense lawyers have adopted tactics like providing black male clients with glasses, a subtle detail often associated with white nerds, to sway juries. Similarly, auditory cues can subconsciously trigger fear. In an experiment involving playing music while flashing faces, rap music, linked to African-American culture, caused increased amygdala activity, whereas white-associated death metal music had the opposite effect. Acknowledging this, a black postgraduate student chose to whistle Vivaldi pieces when walking home at night to appear less threatening. Furthermore, our responses towards others are influenced by our immediate social context. Men exhibit risk-taking behaviors and display a preference for luxury items over essentials when in the presence of women, potentially the brain's unconscious attempt at sending mating signals. In conclusion, sensory cues significantly shape our perceptions, attitudes, and behaviors. Recognizing and understanding these subconscious biases will help us better navigate our social interactions and work towards creating a more equitable world. Hormones, Unraveling Complex Behaviors Hormones, such as testosterone and oxytocin, are chemical messengers affecting the brain and influencing human behavior. However, their impact is more nuanced than what we often think. The connection between testosterone and aggression is not a one-way street, with aggressive behavior causing increased testosterone secretion. Meanwhile, oxytocin is linked with trust, but its effectiveness depends on the social context it is present in. Our body is a complex system with hormones playing a crucial role in regulating our behavior, often in unexpected ways. Take testosterone, for instance, which is produced in the male testes and female ovaries. While many associate it with aggression, testosterone doesn't directly cause aggressive behavior. In fact, it's aggressive behavior that leads to increased testosterone secretion. So, chasing that belief isn't always productive, the truth lies in understanding the context. Similarly, the hormone oxytocin is responsible for positive emotions like trust. While testosterone enhances amygdala activity, often leading to aggression, oxytocin inhibits it, resulting in prosocial behavior. This fascinating connection has been observed in studies with economic games. Subjects with higher oxytocin levels viewed others as more trustworthy, even if they were being deceitful. However, context is crucial in understanding the relationship between oxytocin and trust. During the economic games, an increased trust was only observed when the players were physically present in the same room. If the participants were anonymous and in different rooms, the level of trust did not increase. This shows that the influence of hormones on behavior is more intricate than we think, pointing at the importance of context. In conclusion, unraveling human behaviors and emotions involves understanding the intricate relationship between hormones like testosterone and oxytocin, and the context they operate in. Recognizing these nuances helps us move past simplistic beliefs and paint a more accurate picture of the complex connections shaping our actions and reactions. Brain Development and Behavior Our brains reach 85% of their development within the first two years of life, with the crucial remaining 15% developing during adolescence, shaping our behavior. An immature frontal cortex influences risk-taking and impulsiveness, increasing violent tendencies in late adolescents and young adults. The awareness of these developmental tendencies has led to more lenient treatments of young offenders in some justice systems. Furthermore, 
childhood adversity such as poverty or abuse can lead to overdevelopment of the amygdala and underdevelopment of the frontal cortex, resulting in poor behavioral regulation and a predisposition towards violence later in life. The brain's growth in the first two years accounts for 85% of its full development, showcasing its significance in shaping our behavior. The frontal cortex, responsible for behavioral regulation, continues to mature until we reach our mid-twenties. Adolescence is a crucial period for brain development, during which an immature frontal cortex can negatively impact risk-taking and impulsiveness. This lack of self-regulation contributes to a surge in violent behavior among late adolescents and young adults. Such biological understanding has led to modified treatments of juvenile criminals in countries like the United States, where the Supreme Court ruled life without parole unconstitutional for young offenders. Childhood plays an essential role in the lifelong propensity towards violence. Remarkable neuroplasticity allows children's brains to process information rapidly but may also lead to challenges if the child faces repeated negative experiences. Research indicates that 33% of adults subjected to childhood abuse will eventually abuse their own children. Adversity in childhood, such as poverty or violence, triggers simultaneous neurological overdevelopment, in the amygdala, and underdevelopment, in the frontal cortex, yielding harmful consequences. The frontal cortex functions to inhibit the amygdala's impulsive reactions. When the frontal cortex is underdeveloped and the amygdala is overdeveloped due to childhood adversity, the result is poorer behavioral regulation and an increased inclination towards violence in later life. Culture shapes our behavior. Our brain's physiology is crucial in understanding human behavior, but cultural conditioning also plays a significant role in shaping how we act. The contrast between individualistic cultures, such as the United States, and collectivist cultures like those in East Asia illustrates this impact. This variance manifests in differing brain activation patterns, sensory processing, and moral systems. For example, individualist cultures prioritize personal rights, while collectivist cultures focus on the group's needs, leading to diverse moral values and stances on topics like criminal justice. Grasping the intricacies of the human brain is key to unlocking the mysteries behind our behavior. However, neurobiology is only one piece of the puzzle, our cultural upbringing also heavily influences how we act. A striking example of this can be seen when comparing individualist and collectivist cultures. In individualist societies like the United States, personal achievement and individual rights take precedence, whereas collectivist cultures such as those in East Asia prioritize the welfare and needs of the group as a whole. This cultural distinction is reflected in brain activation patterns. When looking at pictures of themselves, Americans' frontal cortices are more likely to activate than when viewing pictures of relatives. Conversely, East Asians don't demonstrate this tendency to the same degree. These cultural variations also have an impact on sensory processing. When presented with an image that features a person surrounded by a detailed scene, Westerners typically remember the individual and their characteristics, while East Asians are more likely to recall the context and surrounding scene. These cultural differences contribute to disparate moral systems as well. For instance, collectivist cultures often emphasize the greater good, leading to a more utilitarian approach in areas such as criminal justice. In these societies, incarcerating an innocent person to prevent a riot may be considered acceptable. On the other hand, individualist cultures like the United States place great importance on individual rights, making any potential imprisonment without due process a violation of societal norms. In conclusion, both our brain's physiology and cultural conditioning act as crucial factors in shaping human behavior, weaving a complex tapestry of actions and reactions guided by neurological and cultural influences. Ecology Shaping Cultural Differences Cultural differences between collectivist and individualist societies are deeply influenced by their ecological and geographical backgrounds. East Asian civilizations that rely on rice cultivation lean more towards collectivism due to the communal nature of agriculture, while wheat-growing regions of northern China exhibit more individualistic traits. 
Likewise, the United States' roots in immigration and colonial expansion have fostered a culture of individualism, self-reliance, and aggression, especially in the southern states' rural and pastoral landscape. This has also led to increased levels of violence and a preference for self-governance. Geographical and ecological contexts play a significant role in shaping the behavior of collectivist and individualist cultures. The cultural development of society can be traced back to the long-standing influence of its environmental surroundings. For instance, East Asian civilizations with rice cultivation as their primary agricultural activity exhibit a more communal attitude. Rice farming requires cooperative efforts and collective labor. In contrast, northern China's wheat cultivation fosters a more individualistic mindset, as wheat farming is comparably more solitary. Consequently, the prevalence of divorce and patent filings is higher in the northern wheat-growing regions. Similarly, the United States' penchant for individualism owes its roots to the country's geographic history. One important factor is the influx of immigrants, many of whom were outcasts or second-class citizens seeking a fresh start. These individuals sought opportunities above their previous circumstances in a new geographical environment. Moreover, the expansion of the American frontier and the continual push for colonization encouraged settlers to develop and farm the land. This process nurtured a strong sense of self-reliance, individualism, and aggression still evident today, particularly in the rural southern states. The pastoral landscape and dispersed population in these regions have limited the reach of the central government, breeding a culture of self-governance that historically took justice into their own hands. Unfortunately, this mindset has also contributed to increased levels of violence, a challenge that persists today. Neurobiology influences politics. The brain's involvement in shaping political views and morals can be traced through neurobiological conditions. Studies have shown a correlation between individuals with liberal and conservative worldviews and the way they rationalized situations. Liberals tend to lean toward situational explanations, and they possess increased gray matter in the cingulate cortex associated with empathy. On the other hand, conservatives demonstrate an increased perception of fear due to their enlarged amygdala, which often makes them more anxious in risky situations. Additionally, the frontal cortex plays an essential role in determining our moral conduct, engaging significantly in situations that might invite deception. It may not be surprising to learn that political views and morals are influenced by neurobiology. This influence can be observed in how people from opposite ends of the political spectrum react to similar situations. During a study, individuals were asked for their opinion on the roots of poverty. At first, both liberals and conservatives blamed poor people's laziness. However, given time to think, liberals shifted the blame toward systemic issues that disadvantaged the poor. This pattern repeats with other situations as liberals increasingly attribute scenarios to external factors rather than solely individual responsibility. Diving deeper, neurobiological differences can be observed between liberals and conservatives. Liberals tend to possess higher levels of gray matter in their cingulate cortex, promoting empathy. In contrast, conservatives often exhibit an increased fear perception due to their larger amygdala which results in greater anxiety in risky situations. Beyond politics, neurobiology profoundly affects morality too. The frontal cortex, responsible for moral decision-making, activates when a person considers lying against their better judgment. It has to work harder to suppress the inclination to tell the truth, as our brains find it easier than strategic deceit. Interestingly, Extremely honest individuals do not showcase significant frontal cortex activity when presented with an opportunity to deceive as deception isn't innately aligned with their disposition. Empathy, Compassion, and the Brain When we witness someone experiencing pain, we often respond with empathy, which triggers a physical reaction within us. The anterior cingulate cortex, ACC, plays a significant role in our empathetic response, linking the frontal cortex and the amygdala to help us learn fear from observable bad experiences. However, empathy is more related to self-preservation than a genuine desire to help others. 
Levels of empathy can also be affected by factors such as perceived race, impacting our likelihood to empathize with someone from another ethnic background. A study on empathy and compassion revealed that while empathy led to anxiety and negative feelings, compassion activated the frontal cortex, resulting in positive and prosocial emotions. This indicates that empathy and compassion are not synonymous, but rather linked to distinct brain regions and reactions to others' pain. Human behavior is a highly complex and multifaceted field, ranging from societal and historical conditioning to minute neurological activations. In conclusion, BEHAVE provides us with a comprehensive understanding of the complex factors that shape human behavior. Our actions are influenced by an intricate interplay of brain functions, sensory cues, hormonal activity, and the socio-cultural context in which we operate. We've also seen that our cultural and historical background, individual experiences, and even political inclinations shape our morality and decision-making processes. Ultimately, Sapolsky underlines the need for an interdisciplinary approach to comprehend the multifaceted origins of human behavior fully. By embracing this perspective, we can gain valuable insights into why we act the way we do and be better equipped to tackle the complexities of the human experience.